Hello and welcome to another short video about the Omega Seamaster quartz version, 41 mm across on the face with an aluminium bezel insert. This is with the red writing Seamaster on the dial and with the updated back with a much larger seahorse than on the previous versions. This particular example is from 2011 <clears throat> and they have stopped uh, producing these watches in 2012 so it's one of the last ones. Um, this is one of my personal favorites although it's in quartz and I usually wouldn't. So I usually have automatic watches. Having said that uh, I think I came a four circle only lately and I started appreciating quartz high-end quartz watches much better than I used to before. The namesakes of um, Grand Seiko, for example, are very much on my radar. Uh, but this one was just a, a fun purchase. One of the reasons I bought it lately was that actually my first ever proper Swiss watch was an Omega Seamaster, a previous generation 41mm. And it has a functionality, although it's based on an ETA base movement that I very much like. And I am very disappointed that not many... Uh, watches have this and that is the independent hour hand so if you pull out the crown you can adjust the hour without affecting the seconds hand so losing uh, any time uh, to your accurate reference time which makes it a perfect travel watch and uh, today is the 31st of uh, March so we just had to uh, change one hour forward which makes it so much easier anyway this is a fun uh, and a really useful functionality which I think other uh, quartz watches of this price segment should have there is a video from Nick uh, Shabs on the Shabazz on the uh, internet on YouTube about his uh, version and he's saying the same that this functionality should be in the higher end uh, quartz watches and I can only con uh, only agree with him. So being part of the Seamaster family, you probably are already aware that this uh, particular quartz model was introduced in Golden Eye with Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. That was in 1990, I want to say seven, but I may be wrong on that. Sorry if I am. So some time ago, uh, let's say over 20 years ago. It is very curious that they have uh, stopped producing quartz Seamasters. They, you can only see in their lineup by Omega currently the coaxial ones and the master coaxial in the most uh, latest edition in the Omega Seamaster 300M uh, as commonly referred to uh, series. So... Uh, it is true and true an Omega Seamaster. It has a very nice, uh, very nice fit and uh, uh, on the wrist. This is one of the best bracelets still, I think, out there. It very nicely hugs your wrists. I think it's it's just a brilliant feel uh, on the wrist. Uh, the issue which I personally have with this is that there are absolutely no micro adjustments on the clasp. So finding the perfect fit, even with uh, half links it's, it's just very difficult uh, you you see i have one half link in it which doesn't have the same uh, finish as all the other links which i think is a let down as uh, as well but hey and this uh, does not have screw in links it has the uh, pins and collar uh, type of uh, inserts which makes it actually very secure once put together, but oh my god, it's a pain to size this wrist, uh, this um, bracelet, I mean, to your wrist. It's very, very, very difficult, or I found it myself very difficult. Uh, that is, if you don't want to scratch the bracelet, and if you, even if you are very careful, it's just very hard to get these pins out, and they are a dirt magnet. So if any one of you has ever seen a bracelet like this, I mean, I have... Um, as I always do with bracelets, I remove it uh, when I buy it used and I put it into an ultrasonic cleaner uh, and yeah, I mean, come on, the dirt that comes out of this is just phenomenal. Uh, another dirt magnet 
is this little side here. Whatever you do, and I I was wearing this in the office, uh, but still, okay, I did uh, commute every week. Uh, you have to clean it if you if you can't stand it. So uh, it's very secure when on the wrist. You have to apply uh, pressure to both in order to open it, and it won't just fall off your wrist. So that's very good. You can see it's it's milled out, so this is not stamped miles and miles ahead of uh, the Rolex is of the same year, era uh, and it has a dive extension and this particular one has been damaged in some form I don't know the story of that but it doesn't affect the functionality you have to careful you have to be careful when you put it back don't put it back like so but this tiny end has to go below that bar if you want to shut it properly and then when it, once it's shut, it's not gonna uh, come off uh, loosely. Well, it's not loose on your wrist at all. Uh, it's very interesting because now in their newer versions, they have a push adjust, which I think is a much, much suitable option uh, for most of us. Not many of us are using these for diving, uh, but, it's, but some of us may use it for swimming occasionally and on the beach and that sort of thing so i think this is a very great watch for the price and what what i, what I found very interesting is that lately they have uh, gained uh, in value that might be because of the newer versions of the seamaster are selling above 4000 british pounds i mean new and that may be the reason why, why these older versions uh, and the quartz ones especially are going up in value. I really don't know. I haven't uh, researched the market. But they are retailing around 1,400 to 1,700 pounds, dependent on condition and uh, box papers, accessories and so forth. Which is quite a lot of money if you think about it. You are getting an ETA movement, which is great in some sense it does have an end-of-life uh, battery indicator in it so you you would see it when the battery is running out uh, it does not need much uh, servicing you can get it properly um, resealed uh, and uh, tested for around 65 pounds to 70 pounds which is not much really if you think about it for a proper battery replacement and it's nowhere near to the four five hundred pounds for a full service of a mechanical watch so i mean it's really just a workhorse movement it's very easy to live with it's very nice that you just pick it up and it's accurate but talking about accuracy this is not your high-end quartz movement that you would get in a longine vhp or uh, a Grand Seiko. This is this particular one actually has gained over 50 days or there about five seconds, uh, which is not bad. It's just you know I I was not used to uh, setting the time uh, to an accurate reference time on a quartz watch uh, before. I used to have a Longin VHP that was not an issue with it, and currently I'm wearing. Uh, uh, a Casio GW 5000 which obviously is synchronizing radio controlled I will do a review about this one I absolutely love this G-Shock so I wasn't used to that um, and I found it curious the, the loom even after nine years is exceptionally great on this one uh, the pip is loomed as well and uh, well, the bezel is somewhat of a let down, to be frank. It's very difficult to grip. Once you gripped it, it the bezel action is uh, not luxurious. It's rather utilitarian. It's okay, don't get me wrong, but it's not smooth. You can, you can feel how those 60 clicks are clicking in it. And what I found personally is because it's, it's somewhat difficult to grip, it's very difficult to set it right I mean you have to be careful to, to, to line it up so it's not just 
simply turning it and it's gonna be there because you can stop it. Um, so yeah, the bezel is not great, but I do prefer the aluminum bezel insert over the newer version ceramic insert simply because this is meant to be more of a tool watch than uh, uh, a dress dressy piece. And for me, ceramic with the shiny uh, surface is just not uh, not doing anything. I think this one with the um, aluminum bezel insert is much more a utilitarian. Uh, tool watch type watch as it should be for a Omega Seamaster 300M but that's just my personal opinion and you are very welcome to dispute that the crown is a bit small I have to agree with other reviewers who said the same for the case size having said that as this is a, a quartz version you don't really have to operate the crown that much so I don't know. The crown guards are nicely shaped, but the whole case has a nice finish to it, especially here on the lugs, how it's a bit curved. I really love that detail. Uh, the crown guards are also whilst functional, not, uh, not obtrusive, not too big, not too pointy, just the right size, doesn't catch any of your skin when you are winding it, so that's great. And the helium escape valve, some people say it would look much better without it. I got used to it. I think the Omega Seamaster 300M is what it is because of this look. So I would miss it if they would remove it. Having said that, I have never ever used it. So <laughs> it's one of those things. Good to have it there, but you know, uh, I, I am yet to meet someone who is actually has ever used the helium escape valve on a watch like this. Uh, it doesn't pinch your skin or pulls your hair. I, as I said, the bracelet is exceptional. I really like it. Uh, what you have to be mindful of if you buy a used one like this is the bracelet stretch. Uh, you can see that this is moving a bit, but uh, from my personal experience, I have seen so much worse, and one of my videos is uh, is of a newer version with a coaxial movement ceramic bezel insert, uh, where I discuss the pain the bracelet stretch can cause aesthetically and uh, uh, also wearing wise whilst you are wearing it. And once these are stretched, this section there is not much you can do about that. Here by the removable links it's easier you can remove the pin you can insert a, a new pin and that usually resolves the issue you can buy those pins so that's not a big problem and you can also buy the pin sleeves because uh, that can be a problem that uh, some people would size these and at home for example or not be careful at the watchmaker not counting it how many sleeves they get back and then, then end up with a few uh, links with a pin, but without the sleeve. And obviously without the sleeve, you, you are not going to, to be able to reinsert those links anymore. But good news is you can buy those things uh, after market. It's not a big deal. Uh, it only costs a few penny really. So it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, unless of course you are not aware of this, then this can cause you all sorts of issues when you are trying to resize it resize it. Uh, I absolutely love this watch, to be perfectly honest. Uh, this has been my daily wear lately. It's just, you know, pretty much goes with everything. It's 41 millimeter. I think that's a, that's a really good size. I have a 17 and a half inch, um, 17 and a half centimeter wrist. Uh, so I, I, I prefer this size uh, or I really like this size. It's very thin. And that's because of the ETA movement, but e uh, ETA quartz movement. But even the ETA mechanical uh, automatic movements in the same watch uh, are not much bigger. I think there is only one millimeter difference between the two, which is negligible. Really, it slides easily underneath a, a dress shirt or a cuff. That's just makes it very versatile. And hey. Pierce Brosnan in Golden Eye was wearing also a blue version with a black tuxedo. So, not that you should do that. I'm just saying that you know some people have done it before you. Uh, that's pretty much it. If as ever, if you have any questions or comments, please do so below the video. Uh, and have a really 
lovely day. Thank you for, very much for watching this video.